Hi, George. Welcome to From the Stage Door. Thank you for joining me. Oh, well, thank you for asking me. Pleasure. Not at all. Not at all. So we're just going to have a quick uh, look at your background. So my first question is, have you always had a passion for theatre and performing? Uh, well, my dad used to be an actor. He's a dwarf as well. So I've grown up around him and around a lot of dwarf actors. So I've kind of like always had that interest. And then years ago, I left school and wondered, oh, what should I do? So I got onto the agency, but oh so small. And then she just offered me Panto and I'd had mates that had done it. And everyone's going, you should do Panto, you should do Panto, you need to do it. <laughs> but okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. It's just 2017. It was the first time I was in Middlesbrough and it was one of the best things I've ever done. I was like, after that fir even first day of rehearsal, I was like, yeah, I want to do this for years to come. So that was that was your first job was, was Panto, your first professional job? Uh, no, first professional job actually. Well, that was the first one I got accepted for, and then uh, I was on lads' holiday in about June 2017, and I got this phone call from my agent, completely out of the blue, and said, uh, "Hi George, are you around next week?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll come back. She went, "Oh, Harry Hill's been in contact. Uh, do you want to go on his show?" I'm like, "Oh, yes, please." <laughs> like I've grown up with Harry Hill, you know, like you've been framed, TV burp. So I was like, "Oh my god, yes, please." So uh, I had to wait a while for them to say yes yeah. so that evening the text going yep they want you it's like yes so <laughs> and we made just like oh my god it's gonna be so cool so <laughs> we went out that night celebrated you know any excuse yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah and then that then a week later went to london to do his sky one show harry hill's tea time mm -hmm. it was with him and hugh ferling Whittenstall, and it was yeah. so much fun yeah Brilliant. that sounds really cool so, um, who was your greatest influence growing up, would you say? Oh, God, that's a difficult one. Like, well, as a dwarf actor, there's not really that many actors to look at, well, to look at or look up to, if you know what I mean. There's only really the two, which are Warwick Davis and Peter Dinklage. And I take my hat off to both of them because they've put dwarf actors on the map, you know. But as I said, I've grown up around dwarf actors, around my dad, uh, people called Pete Bonner, Paul Hinton. And like people from the dwarf acting world who are well known, and like Jamie John, who I worked with last year in Birmingham, mm. uh, he's I've looked up to him as well because he's a real big performer in, in the dwarf world. So yeah, it's like people like that really, like Brian Wheeler as well as another big name. So people like that I look up to and going how like any feedback. Like my first panto, I did it with a woman called Karen Anderson, who again has been doing panto for 20, 30 years. And so I really looked up to her and she helped me a lot through that first one. And the, but yeah, it's it fantastic. Yeah, that's good, good role models to have there. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Um, so do you get nervous when you're performing and how do you deal with your nerves? Oh God, yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> I'm also a stand-up comedian, so I get, also get nervous for any gig. But with Panto, what I find is really helps, and I didn't notice until the first one, is a test, it was, there's always like a test audience uh, right at the beginning. And I always find that helps so much because the director goes, if you go wrong in front of this audience, don't worry, because they know to expect that. It's just, this is your time. If you're going to go wrong, do it now. So I always get nervous between that one and then the first proper live show. But after like the first day or two, I'm like, okay, yep, let's do this. Mm. It's like, but it's good to have nerves because that means you're ready, you're excited. If you weren't nervous, you'd, I'd be a bit worried, you know? Yeah. But yeah, good good adrenaline rush to it. Oh, but absolutely, it. yeah. Hold it. <laughs> um, so which is your favourite theatre to perform in? Oh god, I've only performed well I've performed in three theatres so far: Middlesbrough, uh, the Grove Theatre at Dunstable, mm -hmm. and the Birmingham Hippodrome. And I've got to say, I think my favourite was the Grove Theatre in Dunstable. It's such a beautiful theatre, mm -hmm. and the front of house crew was so lovely. Everyone there was just so so nice and. It's also right next door to a weather spoon on opposite Nystad, which <laughs> also really helps a lot. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, right, like uh, with you, like the hippodrome right next door to spoons, like, try to finish, right, drink, come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. No, but that theatre is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And uh, all the dwarfs, we got to walk through the audience, well, most of them got to walk through the audience mm. at our start. Me and Brian Wheeler came on the end because our legs couldn't do those stairs. But you could just see, oh, if anyone gets a chance, definitely go and work there. Cool. Not to say Birmingham Hip German New Lot aren't nice. You're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're amazing, that's a given, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
What has been the funniest thing that's happened to you on stage? Not necessarily in Panto, just generally. Oh, it's, again, talk about my first one. The woman who played Snow White was a woman called Adele Silver, who Emmerdale fans will know as Kelly. And she's one of the loveliest people ever. I've kept in contact with her. And as the run goes on, you know, we had quite a long run. You start to mess about a bit, seeing what you can get away with, try to get <laughs> each other, you know. Yeah. And she kept trying to get me, and it never worked. But this show, she got not just me, she got all seven of us. Because <laughs> it was the Seven Dwarfs' first scene, and uh, halfway through the scene, me and the Silver Dwarf, played by a guy called Jack Hilton, who's become one of my best mates, we go up the stairs and we find her in our bed. So anyway, the show, we go up the stairs, she's not there. And I knew, because a few shows before, and she'd gone beside the bed to wind us up to jump out. No, no, no. Unbeknownst to any of us, there was another set of stairs behind, going back down. She had gone back down them, and then came through the window and went, I'm here! <laughs> and all up, because I'm... I've got like this mallet thing I'm supposed to drop. Yeah. I'm looking at Jack. He's looking at me. I'm looking at the blunt people on the floor going, what do I do? <laughs> we tried so hard not to laugh. Yeah. And, going, and then when the curtain drove, we all went, you. <laughs> we had a good laugh about it. Like there was another time in the Dunstable, uh, about halfway through the run, all the dwarfs found out I was really ticklish on my legs. Oh dear. I thought, like, we're going to get you. Like, oh God. And, in the death scene, which is back in my dad's day, that's the scene of all of them. You do not mess about in. Yeah. These days, it's become the scene you mess about in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we're huddling around Snow White going, oh my God, she's dead. And Zoe, one of the other dwarfs, suddenly grabs my leg as she's mourning. And I'm like, trying so hard not to laugh. I'm going, get off, get off. So then what I started to do when she did that, I just grabbed her hat, yanked it off and started crying into it. <laughs> But no, I just love shows like that. Like another one in Middlesbrough, we're on this bench and Snow White's singing a song because she was miming it. Mm -hmm. And people in the wings used to always try and get us. And I was looking to the right wing and the dame, playing by Sean Predagash, again, lovely guy, he just comes into the wings and I can see him. I'm going, what are you going to do? And just he's, he's playing the dame and he takes his trousers off. He's just standing there in his big pants. I'm looking directly at him going, shut up, Sean, shut <laughs> up, go away. Oh, no, but yeah, you showed like that where you can have a good laugh. They're the best yeah. ones. I mean, Panto is quite good because you can, you can get away with your thoughts. You can get away with it a lot more than a lot of other yeah. shows. It's like one of the, it. in Dunstable, I remember one of our last scenes was when the Wicked Queen came on and tried to uh, curse all. And she, it was Charlie Brooks from EastEnders. Yeah. And she had this big, like, carriage thing and this big, long dress. So, anyway, she came on this one day and her dress got caught under the wheel and she couldn't get off. So, we were looking at each other going, what do we do? Try not to <laughs> laugh. And so, Muddles and the dame, I think, had to do something like, oh, we need to help her, but we can't help her because she's doing Wicked Queen. <laughs> and I had to try and get her out. And we were all, by the end of it, the scene's gone because not everyone's just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, from your jobs, have you kept any props or costumes? Have you sort of smuggled them home for for uh, for medicine? Well, well, that's an exclusive, actually. I'm, about to <laughs> I'm not going to grass you up, I promise. Yeah, yeah. In the second year, again in Dunstable, I can't. I think I had to rush home or back to my digs or something. And then about a week to throughout the next week, people saying, "Oh." pair of tights have gone missing, this pair of tights, we're, every, we're looking everywhere, where are they, where are they? And I just have to look in my bag for something else and realise, oh dear, the tights are in here. I don't know how, <laughs> I must have grabbed them and yanked them in. So I'm thinking, how do I get these into the dressing room without anybody seeing or moaning at me? Because if they found out, they would have given me hell. <laughs> so what I managed to do was one day, I think, uh, either me, if no, there was one other person in the dressing room and he was asleep or looking at his book. So I quickly grabbed him, threw him under his table and said, thankfully, I didn't get spotted. <laughs> and then about two hours later, someone looked at the table and went, there, the tights. So I had to be like, oh, there they are. I wonder where they went. <laughs> yeah, thinking, oh, dear, I got away with that one. <laughs> cool. But, uh, uh, one thing I did actually, I got given at the end of Middlesbrough, uh, was the, I kept saying to the people in front of house, well, what are you going to do with the poster, big poster outside? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we're not sure yet. We might just throw it. Like, well, I'll have it if you don't want it. And can I get one of those phone fingers? And they went, 
Go on then, George, as it's you. <laughs> I've got in the office behind me the poster that they actually used outside the theatre for yeah. the panto and one of the foam fingers. <laughs> <laughs> got to be done. you got to okay. take what you can. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, absolutely. So um, what's been your most surreal moment, like, within within work? Oh, God, that's a good question. Uh, one of the ones, I think one of the ones for me has got to be yeah, last year. Yeah, last year or year before, I was doing just a day's work on Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, just a stand-in day. And J.J. Abrams was there, the director. Oh, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> and suddenly, out of nowhere, David Walliams popped up. Because he, wow. he, I think he knew one of the producers or something, or his friend was on. So he suddenly just coming around saying hello to everyone. So I was like, uh, hello, um, hello. <laughs> David <laughs> Williams, I've just met David Williams and J.J. Abrams. What? This is bad. <laughs> No, but no, but I can try to think of other ones now. I think like Panto, like meeting Leslie Joseph at Birmingham Hippodrome was a surreal. Like, oh, yeah. I remember actually thinking on New Year's Day this year, back one of the one day in 2020 where life was normal, uh, I got <laughs> invited out to dinner with Joe McElroy, Leslie Joseph, and Jack Yarrow, the Prince. Yeah. So I went, joined them, and then he said, Oh, let's go to the casino. I was like, yeah, yeah. And on one side, I had all the Chinese people, because obviously it's Chinatown. Yeah. And on the other side, I had Leslie Joseph. I'm thinking, this is my life. What's going on? <laughs> I'm in a casino with Leslie Joseph on the machines and Chinese, all the Chinese people on the tables. <laughs> Mad. You know. Yeah. yeah, no, it stays like that. But I think another one is that uh, I was in a Disney Plus film called Artemis Fowl that came mm-hmm. out earlier this year. And ke- I met the director, Kenneth Brannan. And one day I was coming off set in full costume and I almost slipped and he grabbed me just as I was about to slip. I'm like, oh, thank you. And then <laughs> in my head it clicked what happened. Yeah. Like, Kenneth Brown has just saved me. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <yeah, clearly. laughs> Brilliant. What advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, God. Uh, that's a good question. Well, I think if uh, when I was at school, like, don't worry about school. Like, don't. I panicked a lot when I had my official GCSEs out mm. and there's like, don't, uh, don't panic. Your results are okay. Uh, I know you're not happy at the minute, but just keep aiming for what you want to do. And I, th- I remember thinking, oh, I'm never going to be able to do Panto because things would be getting in the way. So just keep doing what you love really and don't give up. You know, I know it sounds cliche that, but. No, but it isn't. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard when you've not, done anything in the industry and you want to get into it and you don't really know yeah what's going on especially at that age as well so i would say for dwarfs it's easy to get into the industry because mm. we get all the goblin work all the creature work you know gnome yeah. work but it's a heck of a lot harder to get well known in the industry yeah that's said earlier only real dwarf actors you can think of are warwick davis and peter dinklage because mm. obviously for all the rest of us we get the traditional gnomes goblins elves you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Warwick Davis has, has kind of really put a path out there, hasn't he? Because he, he doesn't just get cast in your typical dwarf roles. He gets no. cast in, like, acting roles full stuff. And, and yeah, there are other people starting to break through, like a good friend of the family, a girl called Fran Mills, mm-hmm. who's in a show called Harlots. I've mm-hmm. not seen it, but um, yeah, yeah. Heard a lot of people say, and we know her. But that's what's quite funny in the dwarf industry. The... <laughs> Is he, you either know a dwarf actor or you know of them. Yeah. Because most of the time when you go to it, I go to a job with other dwarfs, it's like, oh, hi, how are you? I'm seeing your yeah. neighbors. How have you been? Yeah, so it's very rare you go, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I'm George. Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially well, think, with Panto, where you set seven at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it is good. I mean, at the end of the day, it should just be the best actor for the job. It shouldn't really be just, be, you know, because of no. everything else. It should be yeah. the best person full stop. So. It's good that it's starting to be recognised a lot more now, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Fingers, well, fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah, it, it's always going to be a slow process with anything like that, I think. But, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, it's yeah. definitely a lot better than it, it has been previously, I think. So, awesome. Right, Panto question. Um, so, who has been the most fun co-star that you've worked with on Panto? Oh, God, that's a good question. <laughs> Oh, there's been so many I can name like uh with the dwarf I'll split it up to dwarf the non-dwarf actor. Okay. I think that's easier. 
with the dwarves, a good friend called Jack Hilton, who I did my first panto with, who uh, I'd never met him before this, and now we chat all the time. And so he, we just bounced off each other on stage because you, I, my first panto, and I got played Doc. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh God, that's a throw me in the deep end, why don't you? You know, but obviously because of legal reasons, you have to change the names. Yeah, and I I got changed to Brainy. You can imagine the amount of jokes my mates had. <laughs> me being called brainy <laughs> yeah i won't tell you what three what few of them said when i told her <laughs> he told me where to go <laughs> yeah. and he was playing cheeky he was absolutely built for that part yeah. so it was a lot of fun to mess about with a uh, second panto was a bloke named uh, dino watton who i he's from derby like me so mm. i've known him my whole life so uh, and my parents have known him since he was a baby but and I, in this one i was playing cheeky and he was Sarge, so I was just winding him up every moment I could. And like, there were some scenes I'd make him, he'd forget his lines because I was just winding him up uh, purposely. The band you can hear in the corner would lost, just lost it, completely <laughs> lost. And then uh, there was a bloke called uh, Ben Holmes, one of my best friends I've known for years and years and years. And we worked together in Middlesbrough. And again, him and I were just messing about in the dressing room. And, uh, but then non dwarfs, I'd say uh, a musical director called James Harrison. Mm -hmm. Again, I've said several times, people have become really good friends, and we've kept yeah. in contact since Middlesbrough. But he he's a musical genius, absolute musical genius. Like you could play him any bit of music, and he could be able to play it on the keyboard instantly. Yeah. And like it was my birthday, my twenty first during Panto, mm -hmm. and uh, every scene I was in just hear him play happy birthday on the keyboard and even this is including the death scene and there is nothing weirder than a depressed happy birthday on the keyboard <laughs> okay. da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah and we're all of us tried so hard going james shut up, james, shut up. <laughs> we're trying not and like he would just be trying to get us but he was so funny and like there was another guy called john archer who's a magician and comedian mm -hmm. and again he would just be because he's it he was ad libbing all the time with us and oh it was so funny but like and but with birmingham i'd say people like jamie john he was really funny to work with but obviously we didn't get m that much time on stage in birmingham so there wasn't <laughs> that much interaction between the other <laughs> actors yeah <laughs> but no leslie joseph was an absolute delight to work with she was yeah, absolute joy. Yeah. Uh, Matt Slack, you know, really yeah. funny bloke, really nice bloke. Andrew Ryan. There's, I think uh, there's a load, load of people I could say to that list, you know. Okay, so who would be your dream co-star in Panto? If you could pick anybody to do Panto, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, I don't know. I think probably someone who's popped into my mind who I know does Panto is Paul Chuckle. Mm. I met him last year because he's a DJ and he came to Derby for one night. So I met him. He was really nice. And again, I've grown up. With, I love the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> yeah. I've grown up, I grew up watching Chuckle Vision. Yeah. So I think the form of him would be great. But I've just uh, been watching I'm a Celebrity because I'm a massive fan. And mm -hmm. I think working with Shane Ritchie would be a really yeah. good laugh. Yeah. Like, I know he does Panther as well. I recommend he'd just be a proper wind up merchant. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of people I've already worked with who I'd love to work with again. Like mm -hmm. someone who didn't mention was a director and actor called Will Kenning, mm -hmm. who directs Dunstable and is the Dame. He's one of the nicest people in showbiz I've ever met. He was really funny, always up for chat, and you know, yeah. But yeah, I think I'm gonna go Paul Truckano and Shane Ritchie on that one. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I know you're quite into your comic cons and your Doctor Who. So yeah. who, I have to ask, as a fellow Hoobian, who is your favourite Doctor Who? Sylvester McCoy, easily. Nice. Yeah, I know he gets a lot of hope, but I just love, and I met him a few times, Sylvester McCoy, and he's one of the loveliest people. In fact, a good few years ago, I think about 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. the, me and my mate went to a Comic-Con in Milton Keynes, and we were meeting all the stars, we met Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann, got pictures like oh my god respect two dogs it's so cool <laughs> we're flicking through the photos that we'd taken that night because he came back to my grandparents mm. and my mate went wait stop look at that in the picture we had with sylvester mccoy 
Paul McGann was walking around in the background and managed to shoot it. So we've got <laughs> technically a photo of two doctors for the price of nothing. Yeah. Like, ching <laughs> <laughs> But I, I love also Tom Baker and Patrick Troughton. I just, I'm a massive classic fan, but I do love the new ones like Peter Capaldi. I thought he was superb. Yeah, I think it, it it is really hard to to pick one. I mean, my, I'm I'm a Perth girl through and through completely, but um, I think they're all played so differently that oh, God, yeah. there's, there's so many aspects of that character that you like. You can take something from each one, yeah, and, and just think they're brilliant anyway. And uh, I think like Patrick Trout had the biggest job of them all because often no one knew that the Doctor could change. No one knew mm. about the regeneration. Do you have to prove no? It can still work, and you just just fantastic job because of how different he is to William Hartnell yeah he brought something else as you said yeah yeah so you what would your dream job be would it be to be in Doctor Who or would it be I have no. three roles that I've loved well three things I'd love to be on a Doctor Who B is Star Wars my own character because yeah. uh, all the work I've done on Star Wars has been standing work mm-hmm. it's just fun to get paid but it's like it's really boring you literally sit down for most of the day and when you get called you're like hey right can you just stand in here please yep all right let's get a camera angle let's get the lighting ready mm-hmm. right you're done go and sit down now okay yeah you literally <laughs> doing and my dad as i said earlier was an actor he was actually an ewok in return of the jedi oh, wow yeah that was his first ever job in acting wow. so i'd love to so yeah doctor Who's, and one show i'd love to love to love to do is i'm a celebrity <laughs> Watch it every year and go I want to do it one yeah. year. I'm going to be doing. I'd like to prefer to go to Australia because I hate winter. So, because yeah. I've got off writer. So, it's like, no, I don't want to do Wales. I want to go to Australia where it's nice and warm and sunny. Yeah. yeah. And a free holiday in it. <laughs> yeah. I think my parents will be first on the flag going, right, let's go to Australia. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to that hotel. <laughs> so, but yeah, those three shows. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Right. Quick fire round just to oh. finish off. So, tea or coffee? Neither. Yeah. Sun or rain? Oh, sun every day. Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. Musical or play? Musical. Comedy or tragedy? Oh, comedy easily. Sweet or savoury? Bit of both. Meat or veg? Oh, meat. Hugs or kisses? Uh, hugs. Night out or night in? Oh, night out. <laughs> Tour or West End run? Uh, I've not done either, but I'm going to go tour. Okay. And favourite film? Star Wars. <laughs> All of them? Uh, probably Force Awakens. I loved, I thought that was brilliant. I know it gets a lot of hate, but that was brilliant. Last Jedi? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> let's say about that one the better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> favourite book? But I favourite? Book. I don't actually read that many books. I listen to a lot of audios. Again. Okay, so favourite but... audio book then? Oh, God, there was... Doctor Who once by Big Finish. I've just been listening to the War Master with Sir Derek Jacobi, okay. and those are absolutely superb. So, yeah, if people need anything to listen to on audio, and you can get them on, you get download the app, get them on your phone, list them in the car. So definitely, yeah, Big Finish audios. Cool. And last question: ultimate comfort food? Chicken or bacon? <laughs> You're the third person that said chicken. Or <laughs> yeah. oh, something I do love is which I get through easily is a pack of Percy Pigs. Whenever we go, to, my mum goes to Marks and Spencer and I'm like, can you get a pack of Percy Pigs? Oh, look, there's an offer. <laughs> <laughs> or Jammy Dodgers. Oh, Jammy just... Dodgers. Old school yeah. proper, yeah. I can easily devour a whole packet of Jammy Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, my mum has to take them away and I go, no, no more. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me, George. It's been amazing. Oh, thank you for having me. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. Fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah, take care. And you, bye. Bye.